Hey, 42 here. I've previously talked about deadly computer viruses such as Stuxnet and the world's most wanted hacker, Kevin Mitnick. But I personally think it's really interesting and concerning the immense damage a hacker can do to some of the world's largest companies and organizations over the course of just one hack. So today, we look at the biggest hacks in history. And I can't think of a more appropriate start than a young Cuban-born American who masterminded the largest credit card fraud in history, Albert Gonzalez. By 40, the naturally gifted Gonzalez carried out his first known successful hack into a little-known government agency called NASA. This was only two years after he got his first computer. Early in his career, Gonzalez dove headfirst into the world of credit card fraud by involving himself with a hacking group called Shadow Crew. Shadowcrew.com was a forum operating between 2002 and 2004 where people could buy and sell stolen credit card details. It was ended when the US Secret Service busted wide open and made several arrests. Gonzalez avoided prison time by turning informant and providing incriminating evidence on his fellow Shadow Crew members to the Secret Service. But karma came back to bite Gonzalez when he was indicted in 2009 for carrying out what is still, to this day, the largest breach of payment card information in history. The hack was against Heartland Payment System, which processed credit and debit card transactions for over 275,000 US businesses. Millions of transactions passed through their servers each day. This was a sophisticated plan which Gonzalez branded Operation Get Rich or Die Trying. Gonzalez, along with a hacking accomplice known as PT, who later turned out to be Damon Patrick Toey, discovered a vulnerability in Heartland's payment system which enabled them to perform an SQL injection attack on the company's database. An SQL injection is when a nefarious command is unexpectedly fed to a database which it isn't expecting and usually causes that database to either leak information back to the hacker or destroys data completely. Gonzalez also found the same vulnerability in the payment systems of 7-Eleven, JCPenney, TJ Maxx and Target. He also installed a packet sniffer on the networks which recorded credit card transactions in real time including the Magstripe data from the cards happening across thousands of stores nationwide every day. From these companies, Gonzalez, who had the online pseudonym of Soup Nazi, was able to steal a combined total of over 170 million credit card numbers, instantly giving him on-demand access to probably more money than almost everyone alive. What did he do with his newfound access to unlimited stolen wealth? He threw himself a $75,000 birthday party and lived in and out of lavish hotels for a while, though it is thought that he was acting as a hacking cell for a Russian kingpin, so much of the money was transferred back to Russia via Western Union. The Secret Service finally managed to indict Gonzalez in 2009 and he was handed two concurrent 20-year prison sentences. After his arrest, he informed agents of a barrel buried in his parents' garden containing $1.2 million in cash. Contrary to Albert Gonzalez, our next hacker wasn't motivated by riches. In his own words, he hacked two of the world's most secure and secretive organizations for fun. Jonathan James was born in Miami and became infatuated with computers when he was six. By 16, he was going by the online pseudonym Comrade and had his eyes set on one of the grandest conceivable hacking trophies, the US Department of Defense. Specifically, James found a vulnerability on the servers of the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, DTRA, an arm of the DOD, responsible for monitoring potential threats to the security of the United States, which is really ironic. James managed to install a backdoor on one of the DTRA's servers located in Dual, Virginia. With the backdoor in place, he could place a sniffer on the server, recording all traffic that passed through it on a daily basis. 
Since DTRA employees accessed this server every day, he was able to capture the username, passwords, and private messages of hundreds of DOD employees. This gave him the keys for some of the government's most critical secret systems and made him privy to state secrets that even White House staff were not aware of. Never mind a 16-year-old in his bedroom. Another system that James gained unauthorized access to after performing a separate hack on the Marshall Space Flight Center was the code that NASA used to operate the climate of the International Space Station. In theory, this meant that James could alter the temperature and humidity levels of the ISS from his bedroom. Only a few months after this hack, James was arrested, and still only 16, became the first teenager to be imprisoned for cybercrime. He was sentenced to seven years, but was permitted to serve them at home, minus internet access, of course, due to his age and low risk to public safety. Sadly, Jonathan James's story ends in tragedy. In 2008, he committed suicide because he convinced himself that the police were going to wrongly charge him for involvement in the Albert Gonzalez TGX case when that broke. Now, during the internet's short life, there have been endless hacks that have stolen usernames, passwords, and other sensitive information from large websites. Some of the most notable examples being Yahoo, Facebook, eBay, Uber, Sony, and VeriSign. Whilst these attacks were huge in their scope, Yahoo had nearly 3 billion user records stolen, not one of those had the impact of what many consider to be the most damaging hack in history for millions of people all around the world. I'm of course talking about the infamous 2015 Ashley Madison hack. In case you don't know, AshleyMadison.com is a dating hookup website with a twist. You join with the sole intention of cheating on your partner or spouse. Their official tagline is, life is short, have an affair. Surely nobody would use such a website, you may be thinking. Ah, well that's not what a staggering 32 million people around the world thought, who had signed up to cheat on their not-so-significant other. On the 12th of July, 2015, employees of Avid Life, the company that owns Ashley Madison, logged onto their computers to find a warning message that threatens to release the information of every Ashley Madison user to the public unless Avid Life took down Ashley Madison website and its sister site, Established Men. Bizarrely, this warning message was accompanied by the audio of ACDC's Thunderstruck. It would later emerge that the name of the group or individual who carried out the attack went by the name Impact Team. A week after the attack, Avid Life had still not caved, and so Impact Team posted a public message online that gave the company an ultimatum. Shut down your site in 30 days, or we release all of the user information to the public. Following this threat, Ashley Madison tweeted that they had patched the vulnerabilities on their service that allowed Impact Team to gain access in the first place, but it was too late. The damage had already been done. If what the hacker claimed was true, and it was, he had already downloaded the personal information of over 32 million Ashley Madison accounts. 30 days later, the website was still live. So, in a pastebin post titled Time's Up, the hacking group published the first 10 gigabytes of information, including millions of email addresses used to sign up for Ashley Madison accounts. More data dumps came, and by August, 60 gigabytes of user information had been published by the hackers online for everyone to see. This included email addresses, physical addresses, and the last four digits of credit card numbers. Of course, people all over the world combed through the mountain of records and found Ashley Madison accounts owned by numerous CEOs, celebrities, and politicians. Search engines even sprung up, which allowed one to enter their spouse's email address and see if they had ever used Ashley Madison. The Ashley Madison hack was like no other because it spawned an important public debate. Sure, cheating is wrong. But was it morally right of the hackers to expose so many people in such a debasing public manner? Especially when the consequences were so tragic. 
Two Canadians committed suicide as a result of their personal information being included in the attack, causing their personal lives to fall apart. People all over the world began receiving death threats because of their involvement with the site, and many detestable individuals, entirely unrelated to Impact Team, took to extorting people they found within the breach data by threatening to tell that person's family if they didn't hand over a mountain of bitcoins. As for Ashley Madison, well, it will perhaps never entirely recover its public image, if a website that encourages adultery can ever have a public image in the first place, at least a positive one. But you would be surprised at how quickly people are willing to forgive and forget. The website is still as active as ever, and they have reportedly signed up 30 million new users since the hack. Perhaps that's simply a testament to people's unwavering desire to have a shag on the side. It would only be appropriate to end on the compelling story of a man who, at least colloquially, holds the achievement of perpetrating the biggest military hack of all time. Online, he's known simply as Solo. In reality, he is 53-year-old Gary McKinnon from Glasgow a systems administrator who made the world's most powerful security agencies look utterly hopeless. Between February 2001 and March 2002, McKinnon hacked into 97 US military and NASA computers. 97. Rogue states that rhyme with minor and Musha literally launched millions of hacking attempts against the Pentagon and other US military installations every single day. They really do. Even though the Pentagon wouldn't be shouting about it if these attempts were successful, IT experts think that they almost never are. Yet, a Glasgow man who operated from a small room in his girlfriend's aunt's house bypassed America's most secure systems with ease over and over again. Furthermore, McKinnon wasn't paid to hack, and he wasn't doing it to extort the US government. No. You see, McKinnon was a major conspiracy fanatic, and he performed the hacks to find evidence for his belief that the US was purposely suppressing unlimited free energy sources and evidence of UFO encounters. He didn't find any material that we know of, However, the US authorities claim that whilst he was inside their systems, McKinnon deleted critical operating system files which shut down 2,000 defense computers and related systems for 24 hours. But his most spectacular move was leaving a message on the US military's website that read, Your security is crap. He also left the following warning on one US military computer. US foreign policy is akin to government-sponsored terrorism these days. It was not a mistake that there was a huge security stand-down on September 11 last year. I am solo. I will continue to disrupt at the highest levels. After his arrest in 2002, McKinnon became the subject of a debate which put a small fracture in the US-UK special relationship. The White House demanded McKinnon to be extradited to the US to stand trial over there. But in a landmark move, the then Home Secretary, Theresa May, denied his extradition, keeping McKinnon on British soil. It's believed the fact that he had Asperger's weighed in on the decision. After a 10-year legal battle, it was decided in 2012 that McKinnon would not face charges in the UK either due to a lack of evidence. And all of the evidence that was available was held by US authorities anyway. He now runs an SEO consultancy business. Your computer and online accounts may not require the security of the US military, but you can have it anyway if you want it with Dashlane. The best way to protect yourself against hackers, spammers, and other online threats is by using the leading password manager and all-in-one security suite, Dashlane, who will store all of your passwords in a super safe way without ever having access to them or allowing anyone but you to view them. Dashlane creates strong and unique passwords for all of your online accounts and autofills them so you never have to click forgot password ever again. And you don't have to sweat about the extremely rare chance that Dashlane could be breached. 
because Dashlane safely stores and decrypts your data on your local device only using your master password. This means that Dashlane never has access to your personal data and any hacker would only see random noise. Dashlane also also fills your credit card information whilst online shopping so you can make purchases without ever having to fetch your wallet. Dashlane has a built-in VPN to encrypt your data and keep your online activity anonymous. Best of all, it works on any device. Whether you're protecting classified state secrets or classified videos of your cat, there is no better way to completely lock out hackers from your personal bubble than by using Dashlane. Dashlane goes the extra mile by alerting you if any of your accounts or data are breached. It also has a dark web monitoring system that will immediately let you know if your personal information appears on the dark web where it can be seen by hackers or spammers. From my experience, Dashlane is the best, all bases covered, security and time-saving tool out there. If you visit my unique promo link in the description, you can get a free premium trial of Dashlane for 30 days. Plus, if you enter 42 at checkout, you will get 10% off Dashlane Premium. Thanks for watching and thanks again to Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out using the link below.